In these times of uncertainty, it's all the more important that we keep collaborating, informing and inspiring each other, so that we can be smarter and better tomorrow. Welcome to the Pakhuis de Zeiger livecast. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us on our live cast. Uh, and it's all about creative collaboration and the music industry. We've got some fantastic uh, guest speakers with us today, two in the studio and three on Zoom. And we'll be coming to them in just a moment. And their expertise ranges from playing in bands, uh, DJing, composing music to artist management lobbying and uh, all things in, bet in between frankly I don't play a note so I've got a lot to learn. My name is Kerry Finch and I'm the founding partner at a communications agency called Future Factor and we help clients around the world shape and sustain a leadership position. So I'm fascinated to hear from our speakers about how they do that and how they'll be helping themselves and uh, the clients that they work with, the artists that they work with, how they'll be helping their clients do that post COVID-19. Before we introduce our guests, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. We are here today with Pakhaus de Schweiger. Thank you so much for hosting. And we are here live on Facebook. We're on Zoom and we're also uh, coming to you via Pakhaus de Schweiger's website. We would love the audience. We'd love you folks to get involved. So please do go to the Pakhaus de Schweiger website, click on the Pradme uh, via Zoom button and you can pose questions and I'll be trying to get through as many of them as possible so that we can get your interaction and your questions going uh, to our audience uh, from our audience to our guests today so without further ado who do we have in the studio we have here we have uh, Hans Brauer who is the founder of Massive Music which is uh, well one of if not the first sonic branding company in the world and uh, you've got a global footprint like no other uh, you're also, of course, a, a musician in, in not one but two bands. So I'm going to be interested to hear both your professional and your private um, thoughts on, uh, on music, you know, post-COVID-19. Yep. Uh, and also yep. here we have in the studio DJ and producer Elias Mazan. And we're delighted to have you. Uh, we're going to be hearing about your album. And not when I say album, I do mean albums. Because there's one also in progress. Uh, and via the power of Zoom, we have with us from LA, thank you for getting up very early, Vijay Bierapot. And Vijay is a Dutch uh, composer now living in Los Angeles, working with movies and TV shows, uh, with Netflix, with Disney, amongst other companies. And we also have via the power of Zoom in Amsterdam, Tess van Zwoll. And you've got more than 20 years years experience working in the music industry in all sorts of roles. You're a DJ, uh, you are currently at Sony, um, Sony Music uh, Entertainment. And before that, you spent a, a good chunk of your career uh, at Red Bull in culture marketing. And you now uh, are helping work with uh, 20 artists. I don't know how you find the time, frankly. And last but not least, coming to us from uh, London is Paulette Long OBE. Congratulations on the OBE bit. I'd like to hear more about that in just a bit. And she's the board member for Music Publishing uh, Association UK and wears many, many hats and sits on many boards when it comes to music and diversity and learning and education. So thank you everybody for being here. It was great to have you all here. Um, let's kick off with you, Hans. Why don't I ask you the first question? How does music collaboration work in a time of distancing? How have you been coping with that? And what have you been learning and how has it been shaping uh, the work that you do professionally with your cl with your clients with brands, but also personally as a as a musician. 
Yeah, uh, at Massive Music, we are sort of the hub in between our clients on one side and our composer pool on the other. Mm. Uh, so we all we are used actually are used to working for clients that are somewhere in the world with composers that are somewhere so in the world. So when you say clients, what kind of brands are they? Uh, oh, it could be any. Uh, could any, be any brand brands. that you might have sitting in your kitchen cupboard. Yes. Or in your garage, even. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, we were the list of brands. I mean, we're doing this for 20 years now. Yeah. And I think there are uh, more brands than we worked for than we didn't work for, I think, uh, by now, uh, with six offices around the world. But uh, so for us, it was actually the only change was that at the offices, at our office here in Amsterdam, for example, the 40 people that work there work from home now. Yeah. And we're slowly returning now to the office. But that's, uh, that's sort of yeah, the only difference, actually. Uh, so, so you've actually found professionally the transition quite straightforward. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we, we were always quite good uh, concerning working, you know, digitally. Or with uh, Collaboratively with, across borders. Exactly. With Slack, uh, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And yeah, so it, it was actually uh, quite easy. And personally, I, yeah, I play in a band or two, but <laughs> not that much, but we, we play, yeah, that's true. And we already, uh, we have a sort of uh, backline, uh, sort of set up at the office uh, here in Amsterdam at Massive Music. And um, yeah, it's a big office with a beautiful setup for a band. So we already rehearsed a couple of weeks ago. Distancing, all fine. Yeah. And because we had to play, Jesus, it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, playing together is the most beautiful thing uh, yeah. there is, I think. And what about an audience? What's it like to... Yeah, that's the, that's that's the, the only bit. thing. That's what, what all the artists are suffering. The DJs, the bands, yeah. the artists, the producers, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that is, yeah, time will tell. Uh, absolutely. Um, so, Tess, if I can come to you, because you're working at Sony Music at the moment. I yes. would love to, to know how... Uh, the pandemic and the crisis has, has, has influenced you on a day-to-day -day basis. Because again, you work with 20 or so different artists um, and uh, at Sony, you know, and you've also worked previously at Red Bull. So you understand what brands are going through at the same time. Tell us a bit about the, the changes Correct, on yeah. your world. I, for Sony, I, um, uh, I work with the artists and help them with their plans. So it's yeah. not at, as intense as it uh, sounds. But yeah, we also had to uh, make some changes in the plans because all the live elements had to be kicked out. So, uh, and there were a lot planned. Um, yeah, and especially for artists, it was extremely hard, you know, to stay creatively connected also during this whole situation. So, um, yeah, also realized that in first place, the, the, you know, their comfort zone is the, uh, the stage. And now we had to find ways of, you know, reconnecting with the fans. Uh, so we use Zoom a lot, but uh, it's a difference because at once you're full frontal like me and like <laughs> uh, Paulette and uh, with your face in a screen. <laughs> it's something else. I, I see myself right now. I think, Whoa. You're looking great. You're, oh, we're all seeing you at scale, Tess. It's, it's a marvelous thing. <laughs> oh, God, I'm living yeah. in okay. your hair right now. It's, it's marvelous. Exactly. That's what I saw. Well, you're, living in my, you're living in my boobs at the moment. It's never a bad <laughs> thing, <laughs> surely. <laughs> But yeah, I know it was that that was the, um, the the biggest change that the whole life element had to be kicked out. So we had to find creative ways of uh, the artists connecting with their fans. So that was it was a very interesting phase. I so to, uh, give us an example of of uh, one of your artists or a couple and 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 the projects that you've had to, you know, pivot in order to be able to continue to work, you know, collaboratively. How has that creativity? creativity expressed itself differently yeah good one i think yeah, i have some footage of it uh, of it as well it, there were uh, different stages actually so first of all people start um writing songs about the masks and you know suing masks themselves and yeah discovering new options of creativity i mean the streaming business went on and on by the way meantime and, you know, the second phase was more the lockdown, bored in the house, bored, TikTok exploded. Um, TikTok yeah, so 
exploded absolutely yeah exactly and the you know the car cinemas popped up but okay so there were different phases and for example we had um one of our artists nielsen he well his hair grew and grew longer and longer. <laughs> so he was making fun of the hair uh with their fans and basically his hair was start looking like um vegetables and fruit and that kind of stuff so we had a great interaction with the fans so what is my hair looking right now it looks like a pineapple so okay that was that was the whole thing on uh, on his socials but then you know um there was uh people well it was allowed to play live but then for 30 people it was i think last week or two weeks uh, yeah two weeks very ago. recently yeah right yeah in so the netherlands this is yeah each country of this, course is different exactly this is in the netherlands and he had to uh, he had, and actually the um, uh, he wanted to play live for his fans again he missed that so much so I, I totally hear you, Hans, when you said they have to play. We had to play because I experienced that with the artists as well, that this was the did thing they wanted to do. Yeah, it's. You I know, mean, music is a musical course is a you know is a form of self-expression you know it's 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 a fascinating yeah. um uh, process that you as as musicians go through so elias for example what what's it like what have you been up to um how has has the pandemic the crisis been influencing your work and what i what i find is that during a crisis of any kind creativity comes to the fore with so many people yeah. it's how they find inspiration and and how they how they pivot out of danger out of um uh out of their challenges into into better waters yeah how have how's it how have, how have you found it well it depends there are different sides to it i mean like the first two days i was very panicky in a way because i thought okay just for two days yeah, I'm very strong. <laughs> you um, are strong. But, um, Listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> so it took no, you a whole full full two, two days to get over it. Hours. Yeah, okay, yeah. 48 hours. But but I was like trying to figure out, I was like a bit manic in a way because I couldn't sleep and I had all these thoughts racing through my mind about how, how am I going to uh, figure this out in a way. So I tried to figure out what's the most important to me, like what, what do I really need? And music and food was like, it's very simple, but... That's what really makes me happy, and I try to figure out a way. You didn't need shelter, just well, music. I and food. already had a house. I was very Got lucky. It. Just, uh, I just want to make sure you're safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a garden too and a cat. That's, nice. That's nice. <laughs> um, so I went to the studio. I got everything I needed, like a small setup, a few synthesizers, and a drum computer. And you took all that home. Yeah, because I couldn't go to the studio. I have a studio at Folks Hotel, and they said stay away for a while. Um, and all my gigs got cancelled. I mean, like the whole summer, I was I was supposed to be in Croatia right now, and I had like a lot of stuff going on. Um, but so that was like a positive thing. I really figured out a way to deal with this in a very. I was like very relieved uh, about how I reacted to it. I thought I would be very a lot more stressed out in a way, but I got very calm because I've known how it is to have no money when you start out doing yeah. this thing. So I could really like relate to that and. Yeah. Uh, and everybody was in the same situation. That's also nice. You can really talk to your friends uh, in music about it. And then the creative part was also a bit hard because, I mean, like music comes from sorrow. I mean, the, all songs are about heartbreak and everything. But if, you have, if you're stressed out about your livelihood, it can also really block you in a way. So that, that took me a week or two. And I started slowly making music again. The only thing that was, that was uh, there the whole time was the radio shows. Right. And that was really where I could find, get my, I don't know, where I got my... Inspiration? Yeah, because I Or was it an outlet for an you? An outlet, because mm -hmm. I, I have a radio show called Private Hearts. That's like my, I, I play music in clubs, but I need to do that other show too, with like music in the morning, out of soul, jazz, spiritual stuff, gospel, ambient, whatever. Nice. Music that really calms you down. Yep. So I really focus on that. And then instead of going to the airport in the weekend, I was just working uh, the whole week creating this show that I would do on Thursday. And it gave me like this uh, structure. 
Yeah. Which is also a positive thing. I think structure is is yeah. what, you know, well, I think a lot of us really crave a bit of structure. And uh, this period, this three months has been very strange for all of us, I think. Um, Vijay, if we can come to you, you don't work necessarily with an audience, but you do work at distance frequently and across borders. So, for example, you might be composing for a, for a film, which is a Dutch film, or you might be working in, in L.A., you know, with... Uh, an, an orchestra. How has the um, the crisis affected you? How do you express yourself creatively um, if you're f not able to get together and collaborate? How does it work for you? Well, I mean, at first, when the whole crisis began, um, you know, for us, like composers, we always like we're in post production, so it's more like a, of a delayed reaction because production you know, um, has stopped, but post-production yeah. kind of, you know, is, is still um, going on. So at first, you know, uh, I didn't really notice any difference. Now it has been slowing down. Um, we are still in LA, we're still in a partial lockdown. So um, <clears throat> yeah, but you're right. Uh, normally I write from home uh, in my studio. Uh, so that's not very different. But then at a certain point when uh, I'm getting towards the end of a project and uh, I have to record with an orchestra, uh, for example, and bring in my team to help me uh, get over the finish line uh, in time. Uh, I have a video uh, also about to show how it works when we record in LA. Um, yeah, I'm uh, sure they because we've got some great footage from you. You've got one which is the little vampire animation. Uh, yeah, there's and one. It's called orchestra recording, and and that kind of shows about like how uh, you know we're working in a studio uh, while I'm recording an orchestra, for example. So I can immediately talk to the engineer, to the uh, yeah, here it is, uh, to the conductor. I can talk to the musicians. I have a team around me that can help right away if there's any problems or. So you're frankly that. working with the working with the orchestra at distance anyway, <laughs> because of course you're working from uh, 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 another room. Uh, yeah, but it's like it, it's really uh, the communication is much faster, and uh, you know it's it's quite expensive to record within uh, with a big orchestra and uh, have all the people there. So it, it's very important that we go as fast as we can and as efficient and you know as efficient as we can. And then another example, I also brought a video of how we do it remotely. Um, so that's a whole other thing. Uh, sometimes we record um, remotely. I, I'm sitting at home here in LA and I'm recording in Europe, for example. And it's an example. And then also part of my team members are in other parts of the world. So in this case, uh, I was just working on a movie, uh, someone in Mexico, someone in New York, uh, we were recording in Europe with the orchestra. So that is all dependent on the technology, how fast we can go. And it, it, it can go, um, it, it goes, <laughs> but it's a little less efficient. And so it takes a little bit longer. So it also means that it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I always prefer to to be there live, and right now um, I we cannot do that um, because the studios are closed down. Yeah, of course. And um, Paulette, if we can turn to you, you do a lot of lobbying work. You sit on quite a, a number of boards uh, around, you know, from different aspects of the music industry. What is, what, can you tell us a bit about what you're hearing, what you're seeing right now? And perhaps it's from the UK perspective, but it's, you know, you must be um, seeing a lot of, um, of, of not conflict, but, you know, there are certainly challenges that organisations, uh, businesses, companies, individuals are facing. I think, yeah, initially it was, um, there was the, there was a pause, almost like everything went silent for a moment when there was lockdown, because I think people were... Was that, it was that during Elias's two-day panic? Yeah. Probably. So I, think, I, think, I think most people have said it was about, you know, a week, five days a week of what is this? I don't understand. It all went quiet. And then when we started to understand the implications, especially with regards to the shutting down of the music industry, because 
you know, the, the live venues were the first places to 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 to, to suffer, down, to yeah. really feel the pain of that. So there, there were two parts to what I was doing. One part was um, I sit on the um, board of the London Area Council for um, Arts Council London, which is one of our biggest funding organisations. And I also sit on the board of an organization called PRS for Music, their members fund. PRS is a collection society and the members fund gives out money in um, certain situations to its members. And everything just went, the scale went up with regards to the amount of work that needed to be done there because we had to look at getting emergency funds ready for the sector. How do we, how do we get the money? How do we get the money to them? How do, we, how do we distribute it? What's the criteria? How much do we give out? How much have we got? How many mm. rounds are there? So there was a lot of discussion really quickly as to how we get money to individuals and to organizations. How do we prop them up? What, you know, usually when you give out funding money, there's a deliverable. There's something that you're supposed to give back. But if you're a festival, you know, if you're at an event or you run festivals, you run programs, how do you deliver those programs if you're not able to do that? But if we don't continue with the funding, then how are we going to be able to prop up yeah. the sector? What's going to be alive at the back end? So everything went completely manic with regards to what do we do to prepare our sector to keep it as safe as we possibly can? You know, how do we have to lobby government with regards to ensuring that the musicians, artists, independent freelancers were able to get money from government where possible because in, in the initial rollout, they weren't there. There was a level of criteria that missed a lot of freelancers out. Yeah. So there was a lot of work to do on that side. And um, with regards to the artist, um, I managed an artist by the name of Ayana Witter-Johnson. She is, uh, I think might have a picture of her somewhere. Yeah, I think we do. A singer, songwriter, cellist. And um, just as the others have said, the, the first thing that happened was everything just started, emails just came in, cancellation, cancellation. All the tours that she had were cancelled one by one, all the dates that she had. She had a UK and European tour coming up. And the pivot with her was, OK, what do we do? There were a couple of releases that she was featured on, so it was heavy focus. So she did a feature on Anushka Shankar's single, so we focused quite a bit on that. She had a recording that the LSO released in May, so we did a push on that. And then the, it's the, the request for live performances started to come in, live streaming. And the one that you're looking at there is um, the Royal Albert Hall. They contacted her because they wanted her to do something for their series, which was called Royal Albert Home. And it was just mad trying to prepare the room prepare the acoustics, get the mic set up, get the... All, all to, a, all to, a, to, to a, um, in line with the social distancing rules, I'm That's assuming. It. How, do, how do we do that? And, and I think for the first time, because I was liaising with her remotely, she became the lighting technician. She became the engineer. She was the stylist. She was the makeup artist. She was the hairdresser. Yeah. She was the artist. She, there was she, All of a sudden... It was recognizing, oh my gosh, we don't have a team. Yeah. How do I manage her through this process just to keep everything level and sane and yeah. still deliver a quality product? And the amount of artists that have turned into the, the amount of hats that they're wearing. And, and I think, you know, Elias really is nodding at, here in the studio. <laughs> We've really got to look at how, what's going to happen at the back end of this. How are they doing? How is their well-being? How is their health? How have they managed? How are they coping? All those questions we have to look at coming out of this of this season. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a trying time. Um, there's a question that's come, come in from Nikos uh, to anybody and everybody. How do you see live events changing after all this is over? Um, Tess, if maybe we can start with you. Uh, yeah, when it's over, yeah. I I don't know when over yeah. is because I don't believe no, that we'll ever go you, back to whatever people think is normal. Uh, but yeah, what's next? It's interesting. Yeah, so also here, the, the start of the event with the 30 people on the terraces of yeah. one of our artists, but also where we go to now, where uh, where it's allowed to have more uh, hundreds of people, 100 people in the, in the venue with one and a half meter distance. But... Also, one of our artists, Travis Scott, did um, a collaboration with Fortnite, the online game. Oh, so sick. he did a performance yeah, of himself uh, in the game with over 15, 15 million 
people are uh, five zero watching. million. Yeah. Yeah, it was so incredible. Insane. So I think the future, I think people were so, you know, uh, creative as well in ways of reaching their audience. I think the the creativity is is endless now. So yes, of course, uh, the, the stage is holy and the, the artists would love to perform also with distance, but uh, there are many ways of, you know, um, bringing your music to the, to the fans. But uh, uh, I don't have the answer, but I think there are, well, let, lots of things will pop up. Let's see if Elias has the answer. <laughs> well, last, What's the future? Uh, What's it going to bring us? Last weekend I played this uh, listening session at Doka, which is a club uh, I think for 100 people usually. It's like very, it looks like a speakeasy. Yeah, it's quite uh, intimate then. Yeah, they have a nice sound system. Um, and uh, they had like two sessions, one from 9 to 12, uh, 9 to midnight, and one from midnight to 3. And the first one was people were sitting down and I was playing like, yeah, listening music, like a lot of vinyl, some jazz stuff, like mu beautiful music in a way. And then the second one uh, was a group of people that were already ready to go. It was midnight and that turned out into a party. And, I, and what I'm trying to say is that people, everyone is saying like, well, it will never be like it used to be. That's, that's true in a way, but I've noticed that when you give people um, glimpse of what they used to have and there are a few drinks uh, involved <laughs> then they just turn back into just whatever let's when dance. you say drinks you mean water and potentially some it depends lemonade lemonade, depends. lemonade. Yeah. Yes. it's special, lemonade special right? lemonade but I'm, what i'm trying to say is that it's like it's been three months and that's not very long and i've been like it's long enough to break habits though is that true i don't know i mean like it depends let's say young people so the, the crowd was like 20, 30 somethings mm. people. And yeah, if you look at the, the statistics, they, they, after three months, they feel a bit left behind in right. a way. So they want to connect. Yeah, they want to like come together and dance. And yeah. like I, the, the second set, I was playing more like dance stuff. And, uh, and I just, I noticed immediately that people were like down to, down to go for it again. Yeah. And so, yeah, the future. I'm not, I'm not that, um, I, I, people are very, I, I tend people, people are tend, tend just to turn back to what they know very quickly. We're very, uh, but I, I think it's going to be slow, slow yeah. process. I mean, when you see that people can work at the office again, okay, yeah. it's not advised yet, but for example, Massive, we have a big office, everybody comes with a bicycle, so no trains are, yeah. uh, you know. And, and there's room to spread at your office. Yeah. Yes, there is more than enough uh, one yeah. and a half meters. So I'll be there next but week. We were with four <laughs> four people today. Yeah, yeah. out of yeah. forty. So I, 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 I think I think it's uh, it's going to be slow. And you know, to stand in a concert venue all packed, I don't know. People aren't used to that at the moment. You know, people aren't used to having people around them physically. You know, yeah. you have them, you know, you interact mainly with the people that you live with. And if you live alone, that can be, you know, problematic, you know. And um, it sounds like a joke, but global warming and outdoor venues really comes together in a way. I mean, if the summer is good, I've, I've went to the, the protest in Nelson Mandela Park last Monday, uh, the Black Lives Matter protest. Yeah. And, um, and there were like 10,000 people, but they were all uh, keeping the distance. And in my mind, I mean, it wasn't very suiting for the moment, but I was imagining a big stage and I don't know, Tame Impala playing or whatever, just a band. Yeah. And I think people, if they buy a ticket for and pay money to see a band or an orchestra or whatever, yeah. um, and it's outdoor, I think you can do like big, uh, um, like big, uh, uh, you can produce like a big concert. I don't see that. Oh, why, why couldn't that be? Maybe you just don't sell alcohol. Oh, I don't know. Now it just think, sounds I weird. We're, I think Paulette. we're going to be watching what's happening around the world. We, we're not close yet to having a date with regards to when our venues and festivals can open. So I think we're just watching and, um, you know, getting good practice from what we see going around. Yeah. And, and Vijay, from your perspective in your world, you know, the studios were shut down, so there is no more... Well, let's say there has not been filming for three months. You know, there's been no 
production of film and and TV. But you work a lot in animation. Tell us more about that and how how th that the animation world is is continuing. Um, well, animation is a little bit different. Well, it's also a little bit different. For example, uh, working you know for for a company like Disney where there is a lot of meetings, um, you know, physical meetings, uh, and, and that's not possible. Uh, I also work for other studios uh, around the world where there is less meetings. And uh, so that's, that's already a very different thing uh, if you don't have to be there. But um, yeah, animation, the animation industry, it's a little bit, um, I guess, people can work from home uh, more because it's done on computers mainly. Uh, you see now in LA, um, they're starting to open up uh, like live action uh, movie sets again, and they're trying to figure out how to do that because, um, you know, it's not necessarily for me, but for all the actors and crew, it's kind of difficult to, you know, to be on a set. And I think technology, I mean, and I'm talking about like high uh, budget productions, like, uh, the biggest example is the, um, um, the Mandalorian, the Star Wars thing, where they basically filmed most of the most of the of the, of the series in a in a studio with this whole new uh, technology. So I, I think that's going to be a big thing. And then for us as composers or people in the post production uh, sound, um, we will it's going to be delayed because now we are starting and we're like almost three, four months in, uh, now we, we are starting to see things slow down, uh, but it's only now. Yeah, yeah, so, things are taking their yeah, time, aren't different. they? And what about brands? So Hans, you know, uh, Massive Music is is built on, on, on offering sonic branding, which, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years ago was a new thing. Um, and perhaps a lot of brands are still catching up to that. Tell us a bit about sonic branding and the influence it has on on any brand out there, and how how well uh, that is doing right now as a sector. Um, sonic branding, a simple translation is what does your brand sound like? Mm -hmm. So we try to translate the brand values into music. Mm. Yeah, like uh, brands also have a color or a logo, etc., corporate mm -hmm. identity. And uh, lately, also because of internet and all the digital marketing that is going on, the fragmented media landscape, it's more and more uh, interesting and uh, yeah, valuable for brands to also think about their sound. Mm. And uh, this is actually a really good moment. And we noticed that because we have quite some work. Uh, a good moment for brands when they don't have the campaigns, the short campaigns, because there are no... Uh, shoots allowed. Uh, there is, of course, uh, a bit of an uncertainty. Uh, uh, so yeah. this is a good moment to dive into the brand, yeah, to, I, to I do really a sort of long-term strategy for the brand yeah. and to think about things like Sonic Branding. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you because what we're seeing at Future Factor is a real doubling down and investment from certain companies and brands in their vision, mission, purpose and their positioning as a brand rather than I'm selling a product. Yeah. You know, at the moment, I think, you know, we all as brands, you know, mm -hmm. you as a DJ are a brand. You know, everybody is looking to... to have an impact and at the moment we're looking for positive impacts and I think there's a lot of creativity going on around that as well. Tess, what's your experience of, of brands and their involvement in sound? So you were working with Red Bull, for example, for quite some years. True. Um, well, specifically Red Bull, uh, I was responsible for the music department. So, and it was a goal on its own to build that. So. I'm not sure, you know, it, it was a very, it was part of the culture department. And uh, we worked with, you know, we said we give wings to people and ideas. So we also worked with artists. Uh, we built studios as well. Well, actually, I was in conversation with Hans of building a studio in the uh, Adam Tower. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. But um yeah, and now I'm back at Sony, yeah. also in the Adam Tower. So <laughs> we, we we should do something together, I think. <laughs> but uh, perfect. <laughs> you need some creative collaboration right in your own building. 
surely. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They're the vertical music city. No, but I mean, Rappel was really much involved in music, and I, I, I'm, I can't remember we had our own that we have our own sound, but uh, we used a lot of sounds also for uh, you know all the commercials and videos we did. Yeah, this is a picture of the Rappel Music Academy one of the most lo long existing uh, music academy of Red Bull. First uh, founded by two engineers and then uh, very quick, um, you know, uh, adopted by, by the brand. So it was very interesting in 20 years almost to see uh, the developments of that. Also that a product uh, put so much effort in supporting artists uh, uh, and, and doing the marketing around it. It was really, really in interesting to see. We had amazing artists to work with, this Erica Badu, but I mean, also Pharrell, and we also all, all had them in the studio and worked with them, And uh, but it was always their own sound. We never touched the creativity, of course, uh, but we the only thing we did is we embraced them and gave them a house to work. So something like a studio or a platform uh, and a stage. I loved it. Um, yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, for me, it was very inspiring to watch these videos when I started uh, learning to make music. I mean, they had everyone. And I also um, applied once. I mi <laughs> just missed it. Like, and then it stopped. But I also applied for the Red Bull Base Camp. Yeah. And it was like a smaller weekend thing in Amsterdam. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I had like drum lessons from tony allen i mean like that kind of yeah that kind of levels what yeah. they touched and i really like the fact that they didn't really uh touch the creative side of it they just let the artists uh and the uh, um, people that applied come together yeah and be inspired but there was no uh, yeah here's a can of red bull no. <laughs> um paula this brings me on to because you've done quite some work with community uh, in in different ways, whether it's because you're heading up, um, you know, you're um, on the board of uh, various, you know, diversity specific boards. Um, but you're also I'd love to hear from you about community because you're also involved in education. And yes. and, <laughs> you know, I'd, I, I, tell us a bit more about that. You know, how do you keep people inspired, engaged? You know, what's the trick? Because clearly Elias is, is, was inspired and engaged with Red Bull, you know, and what Tess is talking about. What's your experience of that? So I'm I'm called a, a clock peer mentor. There's a, a program in the UK. It's actually a European program that's becoming quite international. It's about clocking your skills. And I had my skills clocked up to master's level. And it looks at people within the creative industries and basically says, you've been working in the industry 5, 10, 20, 30 years, however long you've been working there. And oftentimes we don't have a master's or a degree or any form yeah. of qualification. However, based on the work that we've done over our years in our sector, we are we're usually masters, but we just haven't got a qualification to say that we are. So Clock came up with a way of validating our, my skills based on the work that I'd done over like a 24 month period. And I now have a master's level qualification based on my actual working practice. And so we, we took that thought process to um, Academy of Contemporary Music, which is a, um, a college in the, in the UK. And we used the process of looking at students who had um, not been able to complete their modules and were about to fall off university. We took a group of them into a, a boot camp. And within this boot camp, we used the clock process, which was show us what you can do. I don't want you to necessarily do an, write an essay. I'm not looking for a dissertation. I'm just looking for you to demonstrate that you have the knowledge that we believe that you have. And we ran a couple of boot camps. So um, you, we've run boot camps at the Academy of Contemporary Music, at ACM, in the studios, in the university complex, all brilliant. But we've then had to run um, boot camps on Zoom. And the last boot How camp have you I found did, it? Oh, so the last boot camp was a couple of um, weekends ago, and we had about 60 students. Six zero, um, 60. Yeah. <clears throat> That's and, not enough on Zoom. You can get a few yeah. more on. <laughs> and what, what we did was we presented them with a brief. So we presented a brief to them that we put together. And in the brief, they had to collaborate in groups. So that's where the Zoom rooms came in place, which is brilliant. They had to work in these groups for the first time. They had to write a song to brief. They had to 
create the song, they had to record the song, they had to record, record it and rehearse it and perform it. So, how did it go really, compared to compared to uh, previous uh, uh, experiences? It was it was brilliant. I think what we did was we handed the the we we put the focus on them. You work out how to do this. This is your area. Whatever technology you have, you find a way to make this work. And what was brilliant was that they found a way to make it work. They wrote the songs in an, in yeah. an afternoon under pressure. They recorded the songs. Some people had computers, some didn't. Some had a phone, some didn't. Some knew how to use technology, others didn't. But they collaborated on WhatsApp. They sent voice notes. They did whatever they needed to do in order to create the song. To get it done. They then found a way to rehearse the song and then de deliver the performance in different ways. So some of them mimed put put wigs on and dressed up and just mimed to the track that they perform. Others created a video. They just found a way to make it work. And I think because it was a boot camp and it was quite intense, the whole process was quite brilliant. But I just love the way that we were able to move the students from room to room in Zoom, whereas if it was face to face, we would have lost them in the toilets going out for a fag, not coming back. But we really <laughs> had, <laughs> we had Oh great, God. <laughs> we had a great way of of being able to just keep every everything succinct. If they got lost, they'd go to the main room and then they'd step back out into their individual Zoom rooms. Amazing. So it was a really it was a great experience. We've got uh, Dennis saying uh, that he thinks it's awesome, the Clock Your Skills platform, especially during these challenging times. So thanks, Dennis. And Tessel is asking, what were some of the best results from the boot camp? Um, anything, one specific best result, super fast? Um, best result is the quality of the songs that they put through based on the brief and the time in which they turned it around. And also that they threw themselves into it. It was just absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Oh, best result. <laughs> the, the fact that some of the quieter people, you actually, their leadership skills were able to come forward on Zoom in the way that it wouldn't have come yeah, forward in the classroom. You see, that's amazing because, you know, you, we're all discovering different ways of working together and actually it's bringing some people out of their shell in ways yes, that you just don't mm -hmm. expect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hans, you folks at Massive, you've got, um, you've been involved in education as well, haven't you? Yep. Tell us about that. What's been going on here in the Netherlands? Um... Well, in the tower, in the Adam Tower, we have a, a music school for kids uh, that can't afford actually to pay music lessons. So we pay for their music lessons and then in the weekends we jam with them. Or we, <laughs> I shouldn't say that I'm there every Saturday, but um, we jam with them. They have uh, band lessons. Fantastic. And we're starting this weekend again. And how, when you say kids, how old are the kids? Uh, I think we've got some footage, eight, or we've got... Eight oh, and, look, that... Eight and twenty. He's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's what you mean, yeah. So, oh, that's yeah, a different project. Yeah, that, that one's a colouring project. book this project. One, yeah, we, we did a colour book uh, with Massive Music. Uh, yeah, just so... Because we also, of course, have a lot of kids, uh, you know, and, and employees of Massive that work at home now with yeah. three kids between one and five. Yeah. Now, uh, good luck yeah. when your wife also has a, has a job, yeah. of course. So we, um, this was a sort of um, musical thing. So the colouring book basically wow. went from uh, Amy Winehouse yeah. to David Bowie uh, and Prince. Um, uh, it, it's such a fantastic, <laughs> just to keep the kids busy while so the parents can do some work, actual work. It's with selfish yeah. reasons, actually, then, therefore, Hans. <laughs> you wanted to keep the kids busy and so your employees... Kids, yeah, but it was also the kids for <laughs> clients so that yeah, they yeah. can call exactly. us for a job. <laughs> so they got, um, they got time, right? You just sent them exactly. very strategically to certain people. That's fabulous. Um, how does... Um, uh, education and mentoring work for you, VJ, uh, because you're in, as far as I'm concerned, you seem to be in a very specific field, composition for film and TV. How do you learn and nurture and um, help develop, you know, others like yourself within your industry? Well, I, th I think that the whole crisis and lockdown has been, you know, um, like an opportunity to um, to work with more people on um, you know online and and as the whole industry will you know it's growing much more global um, uh, it's it has been really good to um, you know to work with my like for example with my team all around the world and 
I think you learn to where, to how to work very efficient, and you come up with new creative uh, ideas uh, to to do the, to get the job done. Basically, um, you know, uh, normally you would prefer to be in a room, but if it's not possible, now has been the time that everyone could figure out how to you know work from home or uh, use Zoom or another. Um, you know, technology to, to work together and to find a very efficient way to do it. So that has been a very, um, like a positive side on it. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's very, I think that's very important. And that's probably it's gonna, something that's going to, you know, stay there or change. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's technology companies that has been probably improving their technology like Zoom and other um music um companies other video conferencing facilities are available <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> but 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 you will probably see that after after this uh, more people are going to be working from home um mm -hmm. or keep working from home and yeah. uh making music from home and making music on a distance and sharing um you know projects like music like protos project and there was already the case, but I think now um, people were forced to do it. So that has been an, an opportunity to learn and to think more creative. Um, so, yeah, I think it's always going to be a combination about, uh, you know, doing something on, on a disc, like remotely, or getting together in a room where you can kind of brainstorm, because that's still always you know, uh, different, but who knows what's going to happen in the future where everywhere, everyone's going to have AR glasses and, kind of like, <laughs> you know, uh, so I, I, uh, I don't know. I'm very curious where it will lead, but technology will play a big role. A big role. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. The world is going to shrink due to technology basically. Um, and out of every crisis, there are revolutionary, uh, developments, you know, and so and, there's, and if I can, can add to that. You know, one thing I was thinking about is that um, I think it's very, very, uh, you know, to, to form a, a team, whatever you do, you know, I'm doing it with music and, and uh, other people in other industries, um, to, to form a, a team of people that are, that are a good fit and work well together, it's really hard to find the right people. And uh, for example, my team, I all... I'll met them in LA, but now they're spread out over the world because some yeah. people are more spend more time in New York or uh, in another country. And uh, but I just, I'm not going to look for other people because they're close. No, I'm just going to stick with the people I I trust and they're good and and uh, we work together very well. And it doesn't matter where uh, they are. And it doesn't matter where they are. And and that's uh, luckily possible today and and not like ten years ago. It must be was a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be continued to uh, to 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 grow, especially uh, especially with technology. So that's um, that's a very good thing. You don't have to find people that are very close to work together anymore uh, because it's hard to find a good team. Yeah. Um, Tess, tell us about um, projects that have come about during this last three months. I'd love to hear from everybody about specific you know, COVID-19 inspired projects that have given you opportunities, uh, either with, for yourself, Tess, as a DJ, or maybe one of the um, artists that you work with. What, what can we, um, uh, maybe we could take a look at the Raccoon video. Yeah, uh, yeah, we showed it up a bit. Um, yeah, that, that, was, that was really, really nice because um, Raccoon uh, got a golden record, actually, for their, um, for their last track. But uh, of course, we could meet them. So we did it via drone. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, it was very creative of the guys, and they were very surprised as well. And also, that whole drone thing worked really well. Fantastic. I've scary. never had anything delivered by drone. I feel very much behind the curve here. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's do it. Now, I think, and yeah, to add on um, uh, as well, I think, you know, it's, it's not only efficient in a way, but lots of things seems to also be effective. Yeah. 
you know, uh, let, we know that uh, calling each other is efficient, uh, sometimes more efficient than take the bus or the train uh, to visit. But uh, now it seems that it's also very effective, the results show. So that's, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about the life aspect because that's, you know, that's the thing they really, really miss, uh, especially the artists connecting with their fans. But um, creative ideas popped up. Also, one of our artists, Susanna Freek, they're a love, uh, lovebird duo. They um, did a shout out to the fans, uh, send us a postcard and we send it through, uh, to your loved ones. Oh, that's and nice. Received yeah, they received almost 7,000 uh, postcards to send. So that, you know, people would, uh, you know, were in need of um, connection again. Yeah, yeah. yeah people connection. want connection, don't they? I can see yeah. you, Paulette, nodding, nodding along here. Have you got yeah. uh, examples of, of where uh, artists um, uh, or, or even brands are making a connection through sound, through music? I think um, one of the, a few of the things that I've seen that I've really liked um, is just the upsurge in one artist firsting another artist. So I was watching Erica Badu with um, Jill Scott um, and I think Kirk Franklin with another gospel artist, just seeing Fred Hammond, just seeing those collaborations come up and everybody taking, wanting to be a part of, wanting to communicate, wanting yeah. to, to hold on to what their, those two great artists were doing in that moment and recognizing that Instagram in the way that they're using the platform, it's new, but I can, I can join in, I can participate, I can send a message through. Another one was unfortunately one of our, um, uh, an artist by the name of Ty, a UK British artist, he died of COVID-19, a rapper who's been around oh, for years. God. And we had um, a few people just um, celebrating his life yeah. and just the community that was building on the chat. I saw people in the chat that I hadn't seen in ages. We were all saying hi, because some of us went back 10 and 20 years and being able to communicate and listen to the yeah. producer who'd worked with him play music, music we hadn't heard before. I think it's just, you know, it, it sometimes seems that, that, you know, something like Instagram can be distant, but actually if it's used in a certain way, it really- It, it, it does people. give a sense of it community, really, doesn't yeah, it? It really brings people together. So it's things like that that has, been quite warming just the ability for technology to break through to break through yeah, yeah i think that's really important yeah. elias you've been um uh uh collaborating on a on an album is that right during this period no that's not right at all but, but i have to say something okay <laughs> uh, she was talking about community yeah and that's like the key word for me the last few weeks months i've been doing a radio show always uh, red light radio yes they stopped and that was like me doing the show sending out the music but i didn't know how much people were listening or who was who was listening and now i started doing it from home instead of one hour a month three hours a week um should we take a look at your, your we've got a video yeah this is an, another uh, united example. we stream yeah this is me playing at the school uh to raise money for club culture right and i, I played four hours in the garden of the school usually it's like a it's a People can go there to hang out mm -hmm. uh, when they're tired of dancing, wanting mm -hmm. to eat something. And there was a, a chat room going on and um, there were like 500 people continuously uh, reminiscing about how, wh what they missed from the school. Yeah. We, right. we had like beautiful yeah. um, uh, camera shots through the building. And then I realized this is what it is, this is what, why we go out uh, to dance or to go to a concert. But usually like if you look at nightlife, it's all about community. Yeah. You know? It's like not, it's not only about just having yeah. a drink and having a dance, but just meeting each other yes. and, yeah. and and connecting on this on this on the same levels, you know. So music is a, a way to bring people to, to bring community. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, that yeah. reminds me, and of it's also a shortcut to emotion. Emotion, you know, you can mm. uh, there. There is a lot. Um, you can uh, music is a good trigger for that. Yeah, I mean, you can put one song on. Yeah. And you're at uh, Brazil. You've gone. Beach, yeah. Where yeah. you were three years ago yeah. or on the mountains. Or your heart is broken uh, again. <laughs> yeah. Or your heart is broken again. Yeah. Or fixed. And I wanted to mention uh, the project that you did on the Adam Tora, the Amsterdam Tower uh, here, in, here in this city. Because mm -hmm. you were collaborating with a couple of um, other companies. And um, uh, we have the photos there. Can you talk us through 
what that was all about? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an ambassador of the Red Cross in Amsterdam. And they, uh, I think around two weeks into the COVID, uh, they called me because they were doing a lot of good work, but that work also cost money. And they were not, uh, the, the, the bank account was not really prepared for something like this. So right. the money went out really fast. Mm -hmm. So they asked if I could think along with uh, helping them raise some money. And then uh, together with Media Monks and IMA, Massive Music and Parole, uh, Parole the news, is the newspaper, the newspaper, the local newspaper here. Yeah, uh, we we uh, I started uh, this uh, thing. We put the Red Cross on the, on the tower with the daily uh, updates on the on the money that was raised. Brilliant. And uh, there were other uh, things connected to that. Uh, Amsterdammers for Amsterdammers. Yeah. Ams for Ams. Uh, hashtag um, and so, uh, for example, an auction in the media and uh, communication world. So we, yeah, in total we raised eighty-four thousand euros and still That's going amazing. because there will be an, uh, an event in the tower soon, and and everything that uh, every money that that raises also is added to brilliant uh, to this. So yeah, yeah, that's a real community spirit that came. Uh, you know your your response to uh, an ask. Yeah, um, and for me it was uh, it was funny. Everybody has another reaction on what happens yeah. in a shock like that, and and I had so many meetings that were so down. Everything yeah. was everybody was afraid, and lots of companies and whoa, what's happening? And to put your energy in a thing like that really gave some. Good energy Yeah, it's positive well. energy. Yeah, yeah. Positive. And you felt like you were doing something. Yeah. We're running out of time. Sorry. There's so much to talk about. I would love to hear from everybody super fast. You know, what is uh, the dream collaboration that you would love? It could be an individual. It could be uh, a, a country. Dead it could or be alive. a brand. It could be... I'd prefer a lie, but it could be dead. Um, what inspires you? Who inspires you? What's the dream collaboration? Has anybody got one immediately? We're just to name a few names. <laughs> Being in the studio with Stevie Wonder. Well, Stevie well, Wonder well, for well, Elias. That's yeah, a I'll, great uh, call. I'll be in Hans? the studio with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Hans and Elias with Stevie Wonder. Okay. VJ, what about you? My artist working with um, Kirk Franklin. I honor with Johnson with Kirk Franklin. It would be wonderful. Okay, so Paulette and Kirk Franklin. <laughs> Good one. VJ, Tess? Yeah, I would love to collaborate with you guys in the future. That's Yay. my dream collaboration for now. <laughs> really want to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's... Yeah, it's okay, uh, sorry to, to, but to, to add on that, because that's also what I want to say is that it's going to be super fast, Tess. We're running out of time. And we've got to get to VJ. Sometimes it's closer than you think, you know, the happiness and the, the people that you want to collaborate with. Yeah, that's a really good One point. And VJ, what about you in terms of collaboration? Is it is oh, it uh, difficult? There's so many people I would like I would love to work with, and I'm also already working with. Um, I just want to work with really good creative people to you know create things, and it can be like in anything <laughs> is there a, is there a movie that you wish you'd collect that you wish you'd worked on um i don't know i would love to work uh for, for the, more for disney um like yeah. the, the bigger the bigger studio movies um i'm on the one side and then uh, and then the other side like something very artistic very very small very creative so it's two different corners <laughs> so either big or or Commercial small. one and the artistic one. Okay. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much to everybody for being involved. To Elias, to Hans, uh, Paulette, Tess, and also Vijay. Um, it's... it's what I think is really fascinating is what you said, Hans. It's about um, uh, music as, as a, a real trigger for emotion. And... collectively and also uh, as as a way to bring community together and i think that of all the you know uh, artistic 
um, routes that people can take through their life. There's something about music which really, truly resonates with people right straight to your mm -hmm. heart. Um, so I think music has played a hugely important role in the last three months in bringing people together, in giving people a sense of positive energy Absolutely. and in That's and in thing. true collaboration and inspiring creativity. Ah. So I want to thank everybody here that's taken some time to, 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 to continue this conversation and uh, good luck with your next projects. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much to Pakas Desvaicha. Thank you to the Future Factor team uh, for making this happen. We have a new... Um, uh, we have a new uh, episode of Together Apart, which is coming up very, very soon, and it's on innovation. So look out for that. We'll be uh, circulating information uh, any day now. So without further ado, I want to thank everybody again, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Over and out. <laughs> Thank you.